Early, early in the morning, they came and woke us up. We were frightened, of course. They wouldn't allow us to take anything with us. No food, no clothes. We had to leave everything behind. We were tormented like that. They loaded us onto cars and trains and drove us to Uzbekistan. The deportation was initiated by Joseph Stalin, who believed Crimean Tatars collaborated with Nazi invaders and hence were regarded as traitors. This woman was born in exile in Uzbekistan and managed to return to the home of her parents only after the fall of the USSR. I was born in deportation and I know what it feels like when people shout at you, you're a daughter of a traitor, it feels bad. Many Tatars boycotted the March 16th referendum on accession to Russia, something which did not go unnoticed in Moscow. In 1783, when Crimea first became part of Russia, Catherine II issued a decree so that Tatars there are treated as our own citizens. Their views, their mosques and their religion would be respected. This was a very wise policy which we will stick to. Now Russia's president signed a decree to rehabilitate all victims of Stalin's repressions. For Crimean Tatars, the leader of one of their parties says this represents a long-sought breakthrough. This rehabilitation of Crimea's Tatars was launched back in the Soviet Union, but the process collapsed together with the USSR. We've been waiting for 23 years for such legislation under Ukraine, but it didn't happen. Ukraine's unitary state doctrine had no place for issues of ethnic minorities. The rehabilitation decree also concerns Greeks, Armenians and Germans, the ethnic minorities who suffered from Stalin's repressions. But for Tatars of Crimea, who have frequently made themselves heard over the past decades in mass rallies, this may be more than just about clearing their name. Land, which Ukraine's authorities often said was illegally held, could become legally theirs as part of rehabilitation process. Alexei Roshevsky, RT.